Carol Foster, and I have, uh, as all of my colleagues, dedicated about 50 plus years to the arts scene in Washington, D.C. I'm a former Dean of Arts at Duke Ellington School of the Arts. I am not a native Washingtonian, but I married a native Washingtonian. <laughs> and so I've been here since 1970 and uh, have worked in all kinds of capacities within the D.C. public schools at University of District of Columbia, um, American University, everywhere, and done all kinds of things. I am a founding member of the International Association of Blacks in Dance. <laughs> and that is a service organization to uh, black dance artists all over the world. And I'm also currently, uh, my latest hat is that I am an emergency preparedness consultant for the performing arts which is a new kind of feel for everybody. And so it's a new hat. So we're going to get right to it. We have introduced ourselves. And right now we're going to talk about, because there are a lot of people here who are possibly not native Washingtonians and may not remember, but we want to pay tribute and remember what Adams Morgan was as a community in back in the day. And so we're going to give a little bit of an understanding for that. Um, for me, when I first moved here, I lived with my college roommate for a little while for a summer, and she lived on 16th Street in Envoy Towers. And so she introduced me to Adams Morgan because we come down 18th Street, and it was the first time I ever saw a giant and a Safeway right next to each other. And she would tell me, well, you go in one and you get your groceries, and you go in the other and you get your your chicken and your meat and your fish because one has better uh, chicken, meat, and fish. And that was my introduction, my first introduction to Adams Morgan. But it was an amazing community. And I think I want to uh, defer to everybody in terms of the richness uh, and the vibrancy of this community uh, when we first experienced it. Coming from Washington, coming from Southeast Washington, being a young man, uh, teenage years, um, come into community where you could be free, you could be accepted. Um, there were lots of lots of different races working together, um, enjoying life. You had parties, you had dancing, you had music going. It was a beautiful um, way to experience growing up and getting out in the community and knowing that you were just a person in the community of the world when you came to Adams Morgan because you saw everybody. You just didn't see your own race, which was African-American for me. 50 years ago, I was 16 years old. And I was escorted here by my father to the studio to dance. I had seen this African dance group on a show called Harambe. And the show would come on after a show called Soul Train. Anybody know the dance show, Soul Train? <laughs> so being young and loving to dance, when I came here, my life changed completely. The person you see before me now was changed as a result of this area. And I remember, like my colleagues have said, it was a happy time. There weren't as many businesses and residences that you see now that are occupied by a lot of people who are from out of the city and out of the country, in fact. But it was uh, neighborhoods with people, children. You saw children running around. You saw young people. Um, you, you saw people of different races and cultures. The studio itself had people from Cuba, from Jamaica, from all around the world coming to learn about the culture here. So for me, it was just very engaging and growing. And let me just tell you, the political environment back in the 70s when I was here was a really, really what was going on that was so impactful for this area was that the decolonization of Africa itself and also the anti-apartheid movement. So you had a lot of meetings and gatherings where people talked about being proactive and raising their consciousness. And one of the things that they fed off was the music and dance and storytelling and artfulness and literary of people like ourselves that could come to the area 
and bring that inspiration to all of those movements. So it was a movement time, and it only built on itself throughout the whole area. So this area was very impactful and very happy place to be. What drew me to Adams Morgan was the energy, the vibrant community that was so loving and so full of life on the streets all the time. This is where we came to have fun and we could experience different cultures while having fun and being, you know, footloose and fancy free. And it helped us uh, to understand that we weren't the only people on the planet. We live with other people, we commune with other people, we have fun with other people. So we, it was the electricity just of everybody loving everyone. And that's what drew me here. This is very educational for me, and it brings back memories. Being a native Washingtonian uh, and, a, and a natural born drummer, I found music in, in um, Adams Morgan uh, during the revolutionary, during the 60s, when the fellas used to leave um, DuPont Circle. It's where all the, the Puerto Ricans and the Cubans gathered, and they had a drum circle at DuPont Circle. And the brothers from Southeast and Northeast were drawn to Northwest it, for, for the Conga. And uh, so from meeting Afro-Cubans and Puerto Ricans at, the, at DuPont Circle, I got introduced to Adams Morgan because there was a Afro-Cuban group in, in um, uh, Adams Morgan, Kubana Khan, used to be in the same building that the uh, DC Arts Building it was the D Arts, DC Arts on 18th Street. Mm -hmm. That used to also be Kubana Khan. It was a uh, Afro-Cuban uh, school, Afro-Cuban uh, Afro dance and music school. They had bata, Cuba lessons, I mean, conga lessons, bata lessons, tango dancing, African dancing. Uh, and I also played the streets. Uh, we were allowed to play on the streets in Adams Morgan at one time. They didn't have so many fenders out. Uh, and I, it, Adams Morgan was a very international mm -hmm. mecca in Washington, D.C., uh, much richer than Georgetown. Yes. Okay. So Adams Morgan, I don't think we can really bring it to life like it was, but certainly, hopefully, you've understood the, the amazing shops that existed there was a drum shop, a drum maker. There were, uh, there was a, a cow and leather shop. <laughs> you know? Shoe there was, there there was yeah. shoemakers here. Shoemakers. Fields of plenty. Stone suit. Fields of plenty. You know, um, so much going on in the neighborhood, and it was sort of, I guess, a, it was not only our Greenwich Village, but it would be our Hyde Ad Asbury uh, in San Francisco. It would be that equivalent Great at that point clubs. in time. Great gay, gay clubs. Yep, great. Because there wasn't Gay Pride Day, a lot of the gay clubs were here in yep. Adams Morgan. Yep. And yep. so, so much has, has been birthed out of this community. 